Hi and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as 4 at 147 Happy 3rd of June, everybody. So let me get my Decision Maker app open and let's see what one we get for today. 24. Oh, so we're going down near the bottom. So I am going to readjust. I'm just going to throw that clip over there <laughs> and then I'm going to just bend the painting just over the top of my easel. Now when I am working on my light pad this actually has quite a thick border so it will actually stay above where the part where the light shines when I'm not working of course it under my lights. Um, but sometimes I do still clip to the side, especially if I need to move it up so that my light pad stays. But for the purposes of this one, we're all good. We can just go based on where it's already landed. And I think I only need to move square 19 up just a little bit. And I need to straighten number 25. Let's go for there because it gave me half of one and not as much of the other. Are we okay for 23? Maybe not. I've got quite a lot of one colour already on this one. So let's start with the O, which is 799. And let's tip quite a few of those in. And then let's zoom you in so I can make sure I get the position of my easel right as well. And we can get started on today's. We do have a mixture here as well of some AB and some glow in the dark because I'm using a mixture of them both. Today's pen um, is from Lazen Lathe Works, of which I will pop a link, of course, in the description for each pen that I use, if a link is available. And I also have the Everlasting Tips in this pen. I have both the full tip, because you can just get some that just replace the little end, and I have the straightener on this one as well. And I must say these are my favourites. And that didn't land straight, let me just take it off. Sometimes it's easier to take it off than try and make it go straight. And um, these are my favourite types of tips. Um, the straightener end tips are quite expensive. So I only have those on two of my pens. I think I did order a few more of these and they do need a little glue dot just to make them stay in, stay in the pen. But I do really, really like them. I just wish they were a little bit cheaper <laughs> so that I could purchase more. Um, Everlasting Tips is on Etsy and I do have a link to them in the Our Favourites section on my website which is of course linked below as well. Um, I do have a link to them in Our Favourites if you do want to find them but yeah I very much like them. The straighteners are very good, they're just not the cheapest. But sometimes that's what happens with the nicer project, the nicer things. I did purchase them in their January sale. They had a 20% off all items and I did purchase some then. I purchased quite a few. I'd already purchased some of the little tips that you can interchange. Let me grab yesterday's pen. So on yesterday's pen, can you see here, that's got a brass tip. You can get those as the steel 
everlasting ones that don't tend to get nicks in or bend and they are good but the plastic can still bend if you're trying to nudge a diamond into place whereas I don't find you get that with these so if you fancy investing they are very nice but if not the diamond painting pens that come in your kit do still do the job there's just sometimes those extra little things that can just make it a little bit nicer for us and these tips are one of them but yeah I'll pop the link to Lace and Lathe Works they have both a Facebook group and an Etsy shop they are based in the States I've actually had quite a few different pens from them so you will see them again in this 30 day June waffle they will definitely reappear because I don't think I have 30 pens if I don't include them but you'll be able to see some of the different designs this is the three bump design and I think it's my favorite for holding it's the one that I like the look of and I like it to hold as well I can either hold it further down if I want the thicker part but quite often I like the little bit of a thinner part to hold. Let's load up the questions for today. My computer screen keeps going to sleep on me. So Jeanette has asked, what type of holidays do you prefer slash dream of? If COVID and money slash time was no issue, where would you go? What would you do there? How long would you be away and who would you bring with you so I've probably got a couple of different answers to that one the first abroad trip that I will be doing when things have fully settled down and the world has returned back to as much normal as it can be because I don't think, I think it's a matter of learning to live with it um, more than it, I don't think it's necessarily going to go away. My, one of my first trips will be to Australia and um, that is to visit family. I would love for us all to be able to go. More realistically it will be me and it tends to be me and one other person that tend to go and it's, it's Megan's turn for that trip. Um, all the other three children have been so far. And a lot of that was determined by whether somebody was in uni, um, about to have GCSEs, you know, exams coming up. Everything was based on when was best to go and who didn't have exams really sort of determined how the other three got to go first um, there was no arguments or drawing names out of a hat so that was a good thing um, but yeah I'd love for us all to be able to go again we have all been once before for my brother's wedding and and that would be a dream holiday destination we do also, as a family, at some time want to go to Scotland, would be nice. Their weather is worse than ours, okay. <laughs> quite often, but we, we would like to go to Edinburgh. Um, that would be a nice holiday for us. Um, she also says, do you like swimming, bathing in the sea, lakes, etc? Um, we don't tend to swim I mean it's it's not I mean you know some of hubby and some of the kids will go swimming I like to paddle used to paddle with my nan um, so I don't mind getting wet I, I don't know that there's a particular temperature it's not something that we go and do very often to actually know what temperature is a yes compared to what temperature is a no what we are or, or at least I definitely am 
I'd probably say hobby is as well. We're not people that tend to go on holiday and, you know, sit on the beach or sit by the pool. And, and you know, that's that's what we enjoy doing. I know many people do. We very much prefer sightseeing and going out and visiting places. Much more active in, in that way. We like to see as much of the country and different things as we can. Albeit we like to do it at maybe a slower pace. You know, no, no cramming things in, no particular time scales. Just enjoy going out and about on little day trips and stuff. Is what we like to do. Okay, so Anne has got a few questions in relation to Australia. So she said, Victoria, is it close to Sydney or somewhere else? No, it's in a different state. Victoria is, is a state, I think that's what they call it. Or a territory, is it a state or a territory? Um, but Sydney's in New South Wales. Whereas Victoria is on the south coast. The main city in Victoria is Melbourne. So I actually fly into Melbourne Airport when I go. And that is probably about an hour and a half or so from my parents' house. Sydney is an hour flight from Melbourne. So I have been to Sydney twice. I've not stayed in Sydney. So one of my visits to Australia, one actually when I went on my own, I think it, or maybe I went with my nan. I can't remember whether it was one I went on my own <laughs> or one that I took my nan to Australia. And my sister and I did Sydney in a day. So we got up really early, went to the airport. She at the time lived about 20, 30 minutes from the airport. So she was a bit closer. And we went and did Circular Quay, went round to Watson's Bay, then went down to Bondi, and then went back to Sydney, sort of stopping, of course, at places along the way, and then flew back to Melbourne that night so it was a long day but a really really good day and the second time we went to Sydney was actually when we all went as a family for my brother's wedding we flew to Queensland which is where his wedding was from Melbourne but the day we were flying up you know for the wedding few days in um Palm Cove, I think it was, in Queensland. The day that we flew was actually Megan's 17th birthday. So it's a few years ago when we all went, but it was actually her 17th. So we wanted to make a bit of a day of it. So we stopped, we flew to Sydney. We were able to leave our luggage in the airport to go onto our connecting flight, which was great. We did Madden Two Swords, the quickest anybody has ever done Madden Two Swords and taken a picture with every item or every sort of person in Madden Two Swords. It was done at the speed of light <laughs> to then go, you know, round to Bondi to then up, up to again up to Watson's Bay round to Bondi and back to get on the plane so it was a shorter day but it was still a long day and that was yeah on her birthday so I've been to Sydney twice it is a beautiful city there are there are some really nice things to see um I do still have a bit of a fondness though for Melbourne I do like Melbourne so let's do some Z. That's my next sort of big block of colour. So I can throw some of these in. What else? D, 
did she ask uh, how close to the to the fires no they weren't that close um even even the fires in melbourne they weren't particularly close to those um my brother-in-law is a fiery though which is what they call a fireman so he is a fireman in australia i don't think i think he maybe took on more shifts to support those that did go to help out with the fires but i don't think he actually went himself though i could be wrong um, do they get to see a lot of wildlife um it is each place that they live they probably get to see different wildlife to, than maybe what we're used to I know the birds are a lot more colourful in Australia and near, well not near, close-ish on the Great Ocean Road, I think it's on the Great Ocean Road, or it's about half an hour or so away from my mum and dad, there is a golf course that has a lot of kangaroos that live there. So. You, they do see a little bit more wildlife, but I think that's more because it's very open. Even if you do live in, you know, a town or a city, there tends to be a lot more space, a lot more open space in Australia. And that, of course, leads to more wildlife. And I think that's probably the reason they see a little bit more than I do. Um, when you visited a couple of years ago, did you get to visit, visit any of the zoos in Sydney? No, we didn't actually visit the zoo. Um, my nephew, one trip I did do a, a, a mini trip with my sister and her husband when my niece was a baby. Um, my nephew did go to Brisbane Zoo. I don't know if they've been... To Sydney Zoo. I know they have been to Melbourne Zoo but I've not. Um, we did go to sort of more of a local wildlife sanctuary though. That was nice when we all went sort of a, a little bit smaller. Well I wouldn't say it was a mini zoo but it did have you know it still had a koala bear and kangaroos and things like that. Um, and we went there with a couple of the, with the two youngest children when we were over. That's close, close to my parents. Um, and then Anne's asked, custom painting in the conservatory, is that Sydney or somewhere else? And that is Sydney. That is a picture we took off the back of a ferry when we were going round to Watson's Bay. I think my husband actually took it maybe we have so many pictures from that trip and and there are a few that are about our house we have a collection of photos of places we've been in the bathroom because you don't want to be sat in the bath and have pictures of people that you know so we chose to have pictures of places that we'd visited and we have sort of a, a picture wall in the bathroom and one of them there is Sydney another one is Green Island in Queensland we also have is it Phillips Island which is in Victoria when we did go as a family to see the penguins that come up through from the beach um, have you ever been to New Zealand no, I've not been to New Zealand. It's something that would be nice to do if maybe time was not an issue, money was not an issue. It would be nice to have a family holiday where we could, you know, visit New Zealand and go to different places in Australia as well as spending time with family. But I'm sure we could do that for a year and still have not seen everything that we wanted to see. Um, okay, next one. 
They were quite two very, very detailed questions. Okay, let me just... So I think I saved my memory card while I was in the middle of saying I was saving my memory card. How's that for saving time? Um, sorry, I'm trying to see if the next comment... Oh, here we go. That's a question. <laughs> what have... So this is from Susan. Um, she's put a lovely long comment. And because I've not gone through the comments and highlighted just the questions... Um, pasted them sort of into a Word document. I'm actually reading them straight off YouTube. And of course, I, I read her question a couple of days ago. So I'm looking through now and I'm reading her comment again. So my apologies for going quiet. But Susan has asked, what have you missed the absolute most during the COVID lockdown that you can't wait to do? Um, I would say it's, it's been the family meetups the family get-togethers. Now that we can meet outside, we have had our family quiz night in person instead of being over Zoom or Google Meets for the first time in ages. So that was awesome. But that's probably the one thing that's been missed the most. I have been in the house for most of it, so I think it's going to take me a while to get used to the other stuff, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff out of the house. And it'll, I'll probably realise more things I've missed when I go, you know, to actually do them. But we went out for a meal with friends as well at the weekend, the last weekend just gone. So it was really nice to be able to do that. I am not doing very well with wax today. I filled up this pen. Normally I can get this whole section done without refilling my wax. But it doesn't seem to like it today. I wonder if these diamonds have got anything on them that's making my wax less sticky. Okay, so Laura said, what are the do's and don'ts with double-sided glue? And she has got a few questions. With double-sided compared to poured glue, which is what this is, I tend to not roll it, roll it up again once it's been unrolled. It can sometimes cause more puckers in the glue or rivers should I say that crop up they can appear a bit more if it's been rolled up again but the biggest difference when you're actually diamond painting is if you do place a diamond you know halfway in the square or where the round diamond needs to go you can't really push the diamond into the right place when you're working on double-sided tape the same way you can when you're working on poured glue. So I will say it's, it's easier with poured glue to, to move them. Apart from that, I don't, it doesn't really bother me which one it is, whether it's poured glue or double-sided tape. I do like poured glue, and if I had to pick one, it would possibly be my preference because it can it can show, you know, it can have less trouble with the canvas when it's been rolled up and you can give the diamonds a nudge. But if a company uses double sided tape, it won't stop me from purchasing from them. I will still buy ones that are double sided tape. But if I could choose between having double-sided tape or poured glue, I would probably choose to have poured glue. I hope that helps with that one. And then she has asked, what do you do with air bubbles or rivers? Um, she had quite a few. She let the air out with a knife and flatten the glue, but now it's finished, she can still wear, see where they are. 
So a lot depends on whether it is a, what I call a pucker or whether it's a river. So if you turn the painting over and you can see, you know, it's, it's puckered up on the back of the canvas, then they can be a little bit harder to get out. If it's a river, I have been known to score a craft knife down it, even with the diamonds on, to try and squeeze that air out. And I find that can work. But if you do want tips on dealing with a bad canvas, I do have a video, which is on YouTube, but the easiest way to find it is to go to my website, 4kidsat147.com and in the video section under tips and tricks I have a video on dealing with a really bad canvas and I do a few different things to get puckers it's got a mixture of puckers and rivers and I actually try and test a few different things on that video which could give you an idea of how to get puckers out of a canvas. So hopefully that'll help you. I do need some more wax because I'm going through it like nobody's business. Oh, so Emma has asked, I'm thinking of buying some stainless, a stainless steel single plate, single placer. What do you think to them? Well, I answered that question before I even came to your question. Emma, I love my stainless steel one. If you can afford it, I think it is a nice thing to treat yourself to. I do prefer them. I didn't realise how damaged some of my brass tips were until I actually went looking at them. And they can actually sort of fold in on themselves a little bit and bend themselves a little bit out of shape. And you don't always notice when it only does it a little bit. Um, whereas I find the stainless steel ones just don't do it at all. And the straighteners are really nice as well. They're just a little, little bit more expensive. Okay, Josie has asked, how can you tell whether a canvas is poured glue or tape? So with pretty much every seller that I know that does poured glue, and there may be a very, very slim exception to the rule, but I've not seen one yet. So I'm going to go with it being the gospel truth across all companies. If your diamond painting comes with a clear cover, like this one did originally, then it will be poured glue. If it comes with an opaque cover over the top, either white or quite often it has writing on it. What does the writing say? Sun or group. Quite often that's what it says in blue writing. Some of them are, are just clear. Other companies have their own branding on it, but then that will be double sided tape. You can often also tell if you do look at it closely. If it's something that you're really unsure about and um, where the tape overhangs you can actually peel it off the canvas some are easier to peel off than others dependent on the quality of the tape but the easiest way to tell is if it's a clear cover it's poured glue and if it's an opaque cover it's double-sided tape And then, oh, somebody said, I remember some time ago that you were working on a cross-stitch project. Have you finished it or are you still working on it? I'm still working on it. It was a Christmas one. I got very much got the bug. I started cross-stitching years and years ago. And it is a craft that I have picked up and done for a good while but then put down 
but then picked up again. It's one of it's one of those things. It's never been the only thing I ever do, but it's it's never fully gone away either. Just moving my chair out of the way. So it's a Christmas image. It was a cross stitch chart that I spotted um, on Etsy and absolutely fell in love with and picked it up. It was in Russian, so it was quite fun to... <laughs> you, you can actually now get apps where you can sort of hover it over the screen and it will translate it for you, um, which was good. Of course, DMC numbers are still DMC numbers. But, um, yeah, it is... I'm trying to see if I can actually get a hold of it. Oh, I can. Uh, she says, and then it gets stuck. Okay, yeah, I have been able to get hold of it. So, it's still on its frame. But this is it. It's a Christmas one. I have finished all the stitches, but I do need to do all the back stitch. And there is a lot of backstitch that will make this pop to life. This is the one that I was talking about. If you tried to do it in a diamond painting, this is what you would see. Whereas when it's actually got all the backstitch in, it really, really pops. And the pattern isn't a full pattern. There's actually quite a bit that leaves some of the um, Aida, some of the fabric and doesn't have a stitch on it at all. So that is the project. It is still going. I'll probably more than likely pick it up to finish doing it next Christmas or close to next Christmas. I don't know why, but cross stitch is very much a winter thing for me. I seem to pick it up a lot more when it's cold. <laughs> I don't know if it's that nestling on the couch, you know, being happy with having fabric on your knee, curling up in front of the TV and doing, I don't know what it is, but I do tend to stitch more in winter than I do when it's hot. And at the moment, believe me, it's hot. So, um, the UK has had rain for weeks and weeks. It's had the wettest May it's had in years. I'm pretty sure they said it's been the wettest May in years. And then all of a sudden, it came to the last couple of days in May, first couple of days in June, and somebody switched the heat on. And it has been... Very, very warm is a, way, is a way to describe it. Okay. And somebody has said, is it them or do those drill looks pearlized? I don't think the drills are pearlized. Um, the, I do have AB coated ones. But I wouldn't say these are pearlized. I wouldn't actually say the quality of these drills or anything to write home about. They are not the best quality at all. Um, I've probably had worse, but I wouldn't say these are up there with, with good quality. These are more like some of the squares that I've had with some of my fan cells paintings and other such similar companies where, you know, the price, they're not awful, but the, the price you pay, it's sort of on the same sort of level. It's what you could potentially expect for the price you've paid. And the paintings do still turn out gorgeous when they're done. But they're probably not the nicest to start a square with. Oh, and I'm actually done with that one. I thought I had more. But I don't. Okay. 
Oh, so Diana has asked. Oh, where the glass pen was ordered from. So I don't know if you're able to answer that at all, Ella Meek. Um, Diana would love to know where that's ordered from. She did ask the question in the 1st of June. It is in the comments. Um, or if you could pop the answer up in the Facebook group. I'm sure she would get it there. Um, but I actually, myself, don't know. I'm afraid. <coughs> oh, so somebody said this is um, this is the first time she's done an advent advent um, painting. Um, and I was in the snug painting with me. You were hot, and I was cold. She's from Victoria, so they are they are in their winter now, or autumn slash winter. So it is getting colder for Australia, though their definition of cold is a little bit different to the UK's definition of cold. Um, we find it's really cold when it's frost every morning and snow. Um, I think Victoria, I mean, Victoria, the weather can change in an instant. It can very much be like the British weather in the fact that it changes so often. However, their degree scale tends to be a little bit higher than ours. So they can go a lot hotter, but their cold isn't as cold. But yeah, it is weird that it's, it's complete opposites. I tend to often go to Australia in October-ish time. So it's autumn here in the UK, whereas it's more their spring. So it's not got too hot that it's unbearable. But I did go in January once. I did experience some 40 degree days, but I wanted to go to the Australian Open. So it had to be done. Um, and had a day out at the Australian Hope Open in 40 degree heat. But it was a lovely day. It was a lovely day, even though it was warm. And, oh, and then somebody did, did put a comment. Hobby actually answered this one, which is good because I would have known some of the answer, but not all of it. Um, mentioned that Hobby is a gamer which he is, he likes, he likes to do his computer stuff. Um, is it PC or console, online or offline? Um, and what games does he play? So Hobby did answer this, but he is a PC gamer. Always has been PC. He's never really been interested in console at all. And he plays Warzone and Squad. But then he loves his VR headset and flight sims and all those sorts of games. He, he very much enjoys um, Beat Saber and boxing as sort of a workout on his VR headset. He often uses that for workouts, especially during COVID when you can't go out. Um, it's, it's really enjoyable for him rather than going swimming or something like that, which is what he likes to do when it's open. Okay. Are you, oh, so Denise has said, are you planning to offer any additional diamond painting trays? Maybe a shorter diamond, similar to my image, but a shaped tray. And what colours are you thinking about adding? So she's actually seen that I've added white into the mix, but she's curious about what other colours. So yes, it's not necessarily been officially announced, i.e. we haven't shouted about it, but that's just because stock seems to go whether we shout or whether we don't. <laughs> but we have added white trays, currently the same as what I'm using, to the website. So very eagle eyes for those people that have seen and nabbed them already. Um, 
they are going to be so white pink and gray which are currently showing us on the website though they do dip in and out of stock depending on which which color we can get on the printer each day are going to be our standard colors so we are planning to have those always available I say they may go out of stock I know pink um, has gone out of stock and then it comes back in because we put it on the printer and we get a roll of it and then it goes back out of stock again so we're trying very hard to build up a stock of some of the colours and we did have a stock of pink and grey, a nice stock and then we had a very busy weekend and they slowly but surely disappeared uh, but we have two printers that are on the go each and every day giving us three or four trays each and we keep changing up the colours depending on what, you know, replenishment of stock that we need. But the plan is to have those three as stock colours. And then we are going to be bringing out limited edition colours. So we have been printing some of the first limited edition colour. We have printed a few, but they will not go on the website until we have printed basically through a full roll of filament. So we get the filaments in, in a kilogram of filament and we will print as many trays as we can from that roll. And provided we're happy with the quality of them, then it will be that number that will go on the website for sale. So as soon as they are all printed, which again does sort of depend on replenishing website stock and things like that. As soon as a colour is printed, it will go up as a limited edition. Now it doesn't mean that the colour will never return again, but it does mean that we won't be stocking that again for probably a good while. Okay, I can't, I just need one and I can't seem to get one out. So I'm just going to take it out with my fingernail and then pick it up with my tray. Uh, we have a few different colours or rolls of filament already in-house, ready to print when, you know, we have the printer time. A lot of the time that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting on the printer to be able to print some colours, to have, you know, enough stock of the normal colours in the shop to be able to do it. But we have, we're, we're always open for suggestions, but we can't give a time frame on any being completed. But we have a blue, a green and a purple that we have lined up to do as soon as we can. So what we'll do is the first colour that we've sort of started, we will do that until, I say, until the roll of filament has all been used up. That amount will be put on the website until it sells out. And we will add the other colours in the same way as and when we can and that will all depend on how busy the printers are printing stock. So do keep an eye out for any limited edition trays that are coming. In relation to a smaller tray, that's not something Every card saved. Got me that time. Um, in relation to a smaller tray, that is not something that's on our radar at the moment. I am used to sort of working on this size of tray, which is what made designing this tray our key focus originally. And I, I still use it even for, for small amounts. My stopper takes a little bit more working out in this tray because it's the first time I've used it. First time I've used my white tray. So the stopper loosens up a little bit over time. Um, 
but it, it's not something that I'll, I'll say never to. It, it's not a never. It may be something that I'll get Hubby to look into if he can shrink it. It may be that he has to redesign it sort of from scratch. And that's to make sure that the lines, of course, for the diamonds don't go smaller. But at the moment, that's not a high priority. But the only reason it's not a high priority is because the printers are too busy. There's, there's a few different things we would love to do 3D printing wise. Um, but they're not fully designed yet. It's not things that we've got all figured out. Um, but there's a, there's a few things we'd like to tinker with to see if we can make them work. But at the moment, the printers are just, they're just too busy. So I've just put two AB diamonds in this single diamond spaces. And I'm going to use the glow in the dark diamonds a little bit harder to see on this tray but I use the the pale pink in my pale pink tray so I'm sure I can still see the white in my white tray and these are the glow in the dark coated drills and I'm going to put these in this bigger block of the painting but yes some eagle eyes have spotted that we have put up on the website the white trays they will be staying so if they do go out of stock they will come back we have two printers that we print the trays on and at the moment we've we seem to have split them in one printer prints pink and white so at the moment pink has ran out in the shop at the time of me filming this. Pink has ran out, so it's currently printing pink and we have some stock of white. And then the other printer prints grey and the limited colour. So at the moment we have a few grey still in stock. Oh, I managed to knock them everywhere. Um, we have a few grey in stock so it's currently printing the first limited edition colour, but it may have to pause. But keep an eye on my weapon chats. I'm sure once they are ready and about to go on the website, I will use one in a video to let you know what they look like. But this is our white tray. And I know there are a few people that very much prefer to work with white. But there is an email notification list if we are ever out of stock of a colour, then do just pop your email into that list. And as soon as we've had, you know, a good print day um, and got a few trays off, we will email people on that list to let them know that it's, that it's back in stock. Um, and yeah, I just thank you all for your support and your patience with it. We did do a pre-order when we first launched with Pink and Grey. I'm trying to avoid delays at the moment with them. Um, I may, yeah, I may play it by ear a little bit and maybe put some of them in stock um, as long as they get shipped out within a couple of days. Then, then I'll put some stock to allocate for that. But if it does get that the shipping is ever gonna be too long, I, I don't want people to have that. I want people to be able to get their trays as soon as possible. But yes, that is today's finished. I'm zooming out the wrong way, I am. So we've dotted all over the page, but we definitely got, we got a few AB in that one. We got one glow in the dark in this one. And in this one, we've got a bit of both. So we will see what tomorrow brings us. But thank you so much for watching. Um, do keep your questions coming. I am working through them on YouTube um, to ensure that I answer everybody's questions starting from the oldest. And I'll speak to you all again tomorrow.